Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And we also have an awesome online Facebook group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcast in the groups. We would love to have you join us. It's so fun to connect with people. And I love hearing, like, we're still here with you. (laughs) Um, So many people are saying, I've never read this far through the Bible, and I usually have given up by now, but I'm going on and I'm with you. So... Whether you're just joining us, awesome. Whether you've been here from the beginning and from January 1st, awesome. We are so glad you are here. It is so fun to look at just the online community because it encourages me. I mean, on those days when I'm like, I just want to give up. I'm so tired. I mean, quite. I'll just be honest. Right now, I'm just so tired. I'm like, Mm -hmm. (sighs) I just, I just want to stop. I'm wondering if Trisha could go on for a couple of weeks without. Me. I can't. I mean, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look, and then I look at the at I look at our community, and our community is is so excited to continue reading, and I'm like, got to keep up with it. Got to yep. keep up with it. So, anyway, it's a it is a good community um, to encourage one another. And so, anyway, let's get on with today. Today we are reading Second Chronicles eight. 1 Kings 9, 15 through 28, 1 Kings 10, 1 through 13, 1 Kings 10. Well, we're just continuing on with the chapter in 1 yeah. Kings 10 and uh, 2 Chronicles 9, uh, verses 13 through 28, and then also 2 Chronicles 1, just three verses in 2 Chronicles 1, uh, 14 through 17. And we are talking about King Solomon. Um, And so in today's reading, we read in detail all his accomplishments. He had Mm. wealth. He had fame. It was like the height of the reign in Israel. Um, And remember what we'd previously read. God had asked Solomon what he desired most. And Solomon chose wisdom, which was really smart. (laughs) And he humbled himself before God. And God gave him so much more than he even asked for. And so I just listed some of the achievements that it talked about in Second Chronicles 8. He built the temple and his palace, and that took 20 years. He rebuilt the towns that King Hiram had given him, and he settled the Israelites into them. He conquered towns. He rebuilt more towns and built supply centers. And in 8 verse 6, it says he built everything he desired in Jerusalem, Lebanon, and throughout his entire realm. Mm -hmm. He also conscripted former enemies into his labor force. He assigned Israelites to serve as fighting men, commanders of his chariots and charioteers. He offered sacrifices and assigned the priests to their duties. He assigned Levites to lead the people in praise. And he also went to the, he traveled. So he went to the shore of the Red Sea and King Hiram sent ships filled with sailors to carry wealth back to Solomon from distant kingdoms. It says Hiram sent him ships commanded by his own officers and manned by experienced crew of sailors. These ships sailed to Orphith or Orfer with Solomon's men and brought back to Solomon almost 17 tons of gold like michelle like this is there's nothing wrong like it's all just good and more good and more good it's it's so incredible i mean just i'm i'm so thankful how we are reading through the bible this year together not only together but just chronologically because it's given me a different view of solomon just like Mm -hmm. it did with david it's given me a different view of solomon because unfortunately i'm like oh yeah solomon he was a wise man but you know he had all these concubines and they brought him down i mean this has given me a different view of how great this man was and how god had blessed him in so many amazing ways because like stuff like prospering like this doesn't just happen. You know, it's God. And it's so cool to read how God just worked through Solomon in amazing ways. He did. And so you gave it a little spoiler alert of what is coming uh, (laughs) in a week or so about, you know, like he, he was at the prime of like, he was getting blessing after blessing, which makes later when he does fall even Mm -hmm. more heartbreaking because really God gave him 
everything his heart desired. Um, and he was at the beginning really serving God. He had the priest set up and the sacrifices. He was really doing a good job, which makes it even sadder later. We're not going to give too much away. Well, we're going to be coming up to this, but later we see that he didn't end his life as well as he started his kingdom. And yeah. But still starting his kingdom, again, it goes back to how God blessed him. Mm-hmm. He asked for wisdom and God gave him wisdom and God used God used this wisdom to just bring people to himself. It's it, it again, I will go back to the fact that reading it, reading the Bible chronologically mm-hmm. has given me a different view of Solomon Yeah, um, to where I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. Which leads into second Chronicles nine, chapter nine. So we hear about a visit from queen, the queen of Sheba. And so she heard about his fame and came to test him with hard questions. The Queen of Sheba came bearing gifts, and it says Solomon had answers for all her questions. Nothing was too hard for him to explain to her. And then we have uh, later, it says in 2 Chronicles 9, 7 through 8, How happy your people must be. What a privilege for your officials to stand here day after day, listening to your wisdom. Praise the Lord your God, who delights in you and has placed you on the throne as king to rule for him. Because God loves Israel and desires his kingdom to last forever, he has made you king over them so you can rule with justice and righteousness. And that is what she said. Happy your people must be that you are ruling over them. And this queen coming from this other land uh, just had all this wonderful things to say. And Solomon gave her gifts in return. And this is just like she came from afar just to hear about him and to praise God. It says, praise the Lord, your God, who delights in you and has placed you on the throne to rule for him. So this queen of Sheba from a distant land came and was praising God because she saw like this is not ordinary. Right. God has really blessed you. It is so yeah. cool. And, and you know, just I think it was a couple of weeks ago, although I've got to say the days are just blurring together. But a couple of weeks ago, Trisha, you started us on this idea of these are the golden days of Israel. Mm -hmm. Like this is the golden days of Israel. And it just seems like it's amped up even more since when we said it was the golden days of Israel. I mean, imagine having Solomon as your king. He not only had wealth and wisdom, but he reigned with dignity. Yeah. And so, I mean, when you're when when you take a look at what the Israelites have been brought through and how they were reigned, you know, mm-hmm. by Pharaoh in Egypt and now all of a sudden they're reigned by King Solomon, that it's just it's just so cool and then he made the nation famous. He pr- he truly put Israel on the map. I mean, think about it. We just talked about the visit from the Queen of Sheba and um And now we live in times where we can easily jet across the world in a matter of hours, but global visits back then from kings and queens and and royalty was really, it wasn't as common as it is today. I mean, there were still visits, but it wasn't as common. So to give you a little peek into this, the Queen of Sheba was from Southern Arabia. That's 1,500 miles away (laughs) Um, and she came to visit. That's a thousand five hundred miles. Trisha, you have been traveling lots and lots this year, this spring, mm-hmm. um, and you've probably amassed over a thousand miles. Well, I'm just thinking when last you- weekend we just drove to South Dakota from Little Rock, and it was sixteen hundred miles. Okay, but we had a twelve passenger van, and we yeah. had rest stops, and we had, <laughs> uh, you know, I was able to work edit my book in the front seat on my computer, <laughs> um, getting internet through my phone. <laughs> yeah. And, and, so. and so, yeah, your, your traveling was a whole lot quicker and a whole lot easier than, than hers. There was no plane, there was mm-hmm. no car, there was no train. Um, yeah, her, her kingdom was wealthy, but you know, she had to have traveled with this whole big, a group of people coming to serve her and and guide her on this traveling. I mean, this was a big visit. This was a huge visit. And Again, the fact that she heard about him that far away. Exactly. Yeah. Solomon put Israel on the map. 
in an amazing way. It's it it just was. It's really cool. And we're also seeing a portion of history um, in Israel is the fulfillment of one of God's promises. And we already know that God fulfills his promises. But let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, where it says, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above mm. all nations of the earth. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And we didn't see fear, but we we did see some sort of like awe. You know, and reverence and like, and from neighboring nations, they Mm -hmm. knew that there was something about Israel. They knew that there was something about King Solomon. They knew that there was a God who was higher than all of their gods. It's just, it's, it's kind of cool to be reading through this and to be a part of this golden age of Israel. And just think like some of the things that it mentioned were there was gold and silver and ivory and apes and peacocks and horses. And it says silver was as common as stone. I mean, she must have just like her eyes must have just been like huge as you're walking around and seeing this. And again, this is the one that that just a generation before his father, David, was like trying to just take control of Jerusalem and just the, the they were fighting the Philistines and fighting the all these neighboring nations and then this is this is only like this is his son so this is Mm. not very long afterwards and there's all this wealth and apes and peacocks and fine horses running around (laughs) it's just like this is a different world yeah it really is i like hearing about this different world it's given me a whole new expansion to my brain i gotta Mm -hmm. say it's making (laughs) my brain be blown Okay, the word of the day is prosper, which just seems like that that seems like it works for today. So it means to succeed in an enterprise or activity, and especially to achieve economic success, which they definitely had economic success during this time in history. But remember, Solomon was also a wise and just ruler. And so his kingdom prospered under his leadership. He had the chariots, the horses, the soldiers. He traded with other nations. He acquired great wealth, but he was also known for his wisdom. So that's a way, you know, he prospered from that wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I think overall Solomon's story serves as a testament to God's blessing. So it's not just because Solomon was great because God chose, like you said, just read in Deuteronomy, God chose to bless them. And -hmm. then also the power that came from wisdom and wealth from that blessing. And by seeking God above all, God trusted Solomon with all the riches of the world. Um, and Proverbs 22, 4 says, humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. And so we also read about seeking God first in the New Testament. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And then Philippians 4, 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So when we seek God, this is for all of us, he can choose to give us unexpected blessings. Not like Michelle, we're not going to have horses and peacocks running around. At least uh, that's not my plan. Um, I would like that. You would like some horses and peacocks? I would. Uh, Peacocks are kind of weird looking like when you get up close to them. Yeah, they are. There, yeah. I've had some friends who have owned peacocks, and I'm like, really? And then I go over and visit, <laughs> and I'm like, ooh. That's some, yeah, they're, they're interesting. Mm-hmm. But I think it's important to know, like, we should not seek God for his blessings. So, you know, there's yeah. that whole name it and claim it mentality that's out there, like, God will bless us because we are his people. He can choose to do that. But also, he gave him his, his son. He gave us him, his son himself. Like, that is what is truly uh, the glory that we should be seeking. But God chose because of Solomon's humility at the beginning of his kingdom, Solomon was hum- humble and he chose to ask for wisdom and he was seeking God and he was encouraging the people to seek God and offer sacrifices and go through the the different rituals that, that God was requiring. And God chose to give him all these blessings. You know, I think 
what you're talking about, like the humility that Solomon had, that is what is key in all of this. Mm -hmm. Because again, we can't have the name it and claim it idea that if we're like, okay, if we follow God, then we're going to get blessed. There, there is a sense here that Solomon knew it wasn't of him. Mm -hmm. Solomon knew that this was only of God. So Solomon followed the ways of his father, David. Solomon followed the ways that Moses had commanded back in the wilderness. But there was Solomon, while he followed all of that, he knew, he knew where he was before God and he knew that he wasn't anything Mm -hmm. without God. And so there was that fear of the Lord that Solomon had. And, um, you know, that, that comes with wisdom that comes with wisdom that he asked God for, from the very beginning, he knew that he couldn't be anything without God. He didn't ask God for riches, but God chose to give him riches because he asked for wisdom and because he was walking in the ways of God. And, um, and, and just as we were talking about prosper and prospering and prosperity, and what does that mean? I was thinking of Deuteronomy five, walk in obedience in all that the Lord, your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you possess. And prosper mm. doesn't mean amassing riches or wealth. We prosper, prosper could mean all kinds of things, but I think we also need to think of prosper as prospering is, is walking in this relationship and, and are growing a relationship with God in a mighty way. Like humble yourself and God is going to give you more of him. He's going to prosper your knowledge of who he is and just all the things we haven't gotten to the book of Proverbs yet, but all those things that who Solomon was and what he was speaking to the people of Israel, he was talking about, Hey, your number one lot in life is to know God and to know him with all your heart, mind, and soul. And and we see that here. We see how God prospered him in wealth, but prospered in him in knowledge and prospered him in knowledge of who God was. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And he was, it says he was a just and a kind king. And, and like we mentioned, word got out. The queen of Sheba heard about him and had to come check this out. So not only was she saying, oh, look at all this stuff, cool stuff you have, but uh, may God be glorified for putting you on the throne. And she saw that. And we never know who's going to be watching us in our lives and yeah. who's going to be paying attention. Um, it's interesting because, you know, I'm always on, on Facebook or Instagram. I'm posting like, this is where we're at and this is what we're doing. And, you know, just that's part of like, we're on the road at homeschool conferences, all these things. So I posted a Mother's Day picture with me and Alyssa and Bella, because we were up in South Dakota. We're at a homeschool conference and it's just us smiling at the camera, you know, just a simple thing. And someone that I had met at Leslie and Hans's wedding, she has followed me on Facebook ever since we met. Like it was a classmate of Hans, they weren't even really close, but she comments probably almost every day on my Facebook stuff. Mm. And so she put um, on that picture, just a Mother's Day of us smiling at a restaurant. She said, you all three look good. And I said, thank you. And she said, the goodness shows on your faces. Mm. And I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. So so this person, like she lives on the other side of the world. I've met her Mm -hmm. once in person at a wedding, uh, but she's watching. And um, some of the stuff she's like, how do she ask questions? Like, how do you know? that God is real. Like, and I'll, I'll, every time she asks something, I'll comment back. But this other, this person on the other side of the world is watching and kind of like, this is, there's a difference there. And she's commenting mm-hmm. on these things. Um, not that I'm purposely like trying to glow with the love of the Lord. It's just right, who we are, right. but people notice and hopefully God will be getting the glory. Mm-hmm. So true. So true. Would you, would you pray for us today, Trisha? Absolutely. That we would prosper, prosper with mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, I thank you so much that um, you give this example of Solomon that you, because of your plan, Lord, just blessed him in so many ways. And I thank you that when we seek you with all our heart, you will take care of everything we need. And sometimes even more than we even need. Sometimes you just help us to prosper in so many ways, Lord. But I pray that most of all, you will give us that humility, that everything we have we know comes from you um, and that people will see that and glorify you that they'll not say oh well look at how amazing Trisha Michelle are (laughs) or anyone but Lord that they will see you in us Um, they Mm -hmm. will see you in our listeners today 
and um, help us to prosper in your goodness, Lord, and that you may be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Tomorrow, we are reading 1 Kings 4. Then we jump back into the Psalms for just a bit. Psalm 72 and Psalm 127. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.